Should investors worry that the GLP drug euphoria is ready to plateau? Let's ask Jared Holes. He's a healthcare senior sector strategist at Mizuho. What do you say, Jared? Are these drugs anywhere near topping off in terms of demand, or is the is the problem more that that the companies may not be able to meet the supply needed? Hey, Tyler. Thanks a lot for having me. First, first of all. Of it's a it's a tricky one. I mean, the stocks have performed so well throughout the year. Um, obesity has been the defining narrative across healthcare and arguably other industry groups. I think now we face a little bit of a challenge with respect to, you know, how the drug launches go. Or are we going to be seeing seeing numbers um, exceeding street forecasts, which are obviously um, not conservative at this point? And then, yeah, I think later on, how does managed care? How does the healthcare system? pay for the drugs. These are all question marks coming into the year. Um, still think the stocks will have pretty good years next year. I just, I don't see 50% returns getting, getting, you know, Eli Lilly close to 800 billion in cap within the next 12 months. Right. And right now it's really the two big, uh, the big beasts in this space are Eli Lilly and Novo Nordis. Do they have, can they meet the demand? I think they'll probably be able to. Within the past couple of months, both of those companies have announced major um, infrastructure moves. Novo Nordisk spending $6 billion on new factories, basically just to supply this one drug and maybe a couple others, and Eli Lilly between 2 and $3 billion. So if they can't meet the demand you know, tomorrow, certainly over the next few quarters into next year, I don't think it'll be a big problem. But that's one of the the main challenges. You could also argue that demand is so high. If that if that's the real sticking point, not a great bear thesis for the stocks. If the issue yeah. is real, is the supply chain is, is the supply chain and maybe some scarcity there, Stu. Yeah, just a, one supply and one demand question. I guess on the demand side, a lot of discussion about government health plans and and what their appetite to kind of fund these are. And then the second would be, you know, how we, what's the bar for you know other companies to kind of enter this space? You know, I know Pfizer has been rumored as as an entrant as well. So, kind of supply demand wise, how would you handicap those two things? Yeah, well, on, on the government side, I think most of this is probably going to be uh, commercial insurance to start. Not sure it's going to be a huge Medicare drug, but it's obviously something we're watching pretty closely. Sounds like most of the plans have priced for it. I mean, next year is going to be a big test, right? Because you're going to see the ascent of both the Novo Nordisk drug and the Eli Lilly drug through the course of the year. Depending on how that ramp goes, um, you know, the insurance companies can reprice the business again for 2025. So next year will be a little bit of a test. And then on the on the competitive question, Pfizer is still looking at that area. It, it doesn't seem like they're going to you know have anything major to speak about. But that's an ongoing debate. Amgen is another one with an injectable. The early data looked pretty good. And then you've got a lot of other companies in the fray, too. AstraZeneca just did a deal um, in Asia to get their hands on an asset. You've still got Altimmune and Viking Therapeutics and Small Cap Biotech. And even though the data hasn't looked um, you know, perfectly clean, structure, GPCR is another one we're looking at. So it does seem like this is going to yeah. be an area with more competition. It just might be that Lily and Novo are the two that kind of lead the pack for a while. Yeah. So, so Jared, when, when you were talking about Lily and Novo up over 50 percent year to date, you mentioned Amgen. And when you were in studio last time, we, we discussed this. How early is too early to be looking at Amgen, who hasn't had, had the run that those other two players have had? Obviously, it's a much better delivery system. You said that the early trials look good. Is it too early to start buying that stock now? Not at all. I, I don't think so. I think a lot of investors have been um, adding to positions or putting new long positions on an Amgen for the past couple of months because they kind of want to get ahead of the curve on this one. They're looking at Novo and Lilly in the years that they've had. And if Amgen can give you anything and what's going to be um, a less frequent injection, if the efficacy data, if the weight loss data look very good, probably in the second half of next year, it's obviously going to be a stock that's going to have a big move. So I think it's started to happen, obviously not as pronounced as the others, but um, I, I don't think it's a stock where people, you know, kind of don't realize what the future holds.